All right, we are in studio with the man, Coach D. Faircloth. How you doing today, Coach? I'm doing great. How you doing? Ryan? I'm doing great, man. I'm so pumped to have you here today. I'm excited to talk to you, hear some stories. Oh, I've got some stories. <laughs> I know you do. Look, before I got to tell everybody I'm wearing my hat, um, in, honor, in honor of you, whenever I started teaching over in Vidalia, I, was, I passed this hat up in the store. And I, and I looked at it, and I said, man, that looks just like Coach Faircloth. And all those years ago, we used to pick on each other. And, and, uh, and, and then I said, I got to get that. So I wore this hat all the time teaching in honor of you, and I'm wearing it today in honor of you. Hey, you're a so. good man. <laughs> Coach is not only a Vidalia legend, but a Concordia Parish legend and a state legend uh, throughout high school football. Where, where did you grow up? All right. I was born in Fairy, Louisiana, of all places. Okay. <laughs> and uh, my dad, after he got out of the war, he went back into coaching, and he coached for 34 years. One of his stops was at Texas A&M. Oh, wow. And uh, we moved all over the country. I was a gypsy. I went to like 12 different schools in 12 years, some oh, of them in the okay. same town. But I know a lot of people. How many of them were alternative schools? Uh, none. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't have those in those days. They called them prison. <laughs> you know, he, he laid the foundation for me. I mean, I raised in Texas A&M my first years in school. And uh, it was a hard school. A&M Consolidated, one of the top schools in the nation. Mm -hmm. I almost failed first grade. And... Uh, it, it was it was a challenge, but I'll always be an Aggie. And any time I play LSU or Alabama, I always pull for the Aggies. I know? remember that. And uh, so he got me started. And uh, like I say, we went to different schools. I, I attended Leesville High School, Bolton High School in Alexander, and I finished up at Mangum, the little school up north. And uh, Love Mangum. That's I got a lot of roots still there. Married my wife. She's from Mangum. Okay. But uh, it was it was unique, you know, traveling all over the place and doing doing different schools. And it was uh, he was coaching at Manny, and I was playing at Northeast. Uh, I had a scholarship at uh, NLU, and. Uh, he uh, died of a heart attack. Had a heart attack with me. We were scouting to Lula. He was playing him in the playoffs. He died that night. And uh, that was my goal to coach with my dad. But that never, it never came about. But uh, I was at Northeast playing and, and I got hurt. And uh, I couldn't play anymore. Too many brain concussions. That's, that's what's wrong with me now. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, Coach White up there put me on his staff. So I was with him for three years this on his is, coaching this staff. This is at Manny. Huh? Is this at Manny or is no, this at it, it, Northeast? Okay, okay. I'm it's sorry. Northeast. So, okay, so you were on and, the coaching uh, staff at Northeast for a little while. Yeah, for three years. Okay. And I got my master's degree and, and all that. And uh, I left there. And uh, got the head coaching job at Manny. And that lasted two days. <laughs> I lost my job to Lou Remkus, who was the coach of the Houston Oilers when they won the uh, AFL championship with Billy Cannon. So he uh, knocked me out of the saddle, <laughs> which is probably the greatest thing ever happened to yeah. me because Coach Remkus is next year coaching there. He was 0-11. Now, if a pro coach goes 0-11, where do you think a rookie coach is going to go? I'd probably go 0-15 on the 11-man, 11-team schedule. How do, they, how do they call you and tell you that after two days? That they you didn't. <laughs> they didn't. And uh, they said, your contract will be in the mail. You'll get it in two days. Two days passed, it wasn't there. So I tried to call people, couldn't find anybody that I knew. <laughs> so I drove over to Manny. And uh, I walked in a little convenience store there. And I said, uh, did y'all ever hire you a coach here at Manny? And the guy said, yes, we did. I said, like, I was fixing to smile, <laughs> I'm him. <laughs> and he said, yeah, 
had a fellow named Lou Rimkus. Look, I went, Lou Rimkus, that ain't my name. I said, geez. So Lou Rimkus knocked me out of the saddle, and I, I praised the Lord that he did oh, that. Oh, my goodness. So I ended up down at Kinder. I was, they just won the state championship, and they hired me as assistant. Well, Walter Stampley, the old principal of day, you called me, and uh, he said, we want you to come over and interview for an assistant's job. I said, well, I've done sign with Kinder. And then I got to thinking what my dad always said, always keep your doors open. Whatever it is, keep your doors open. So I called him back and uh, told Mr. Stamp, yeah, I'll come over and interview with the superintendent and, and Coach Alonzo, who's the head coach. And uh, I came over and it was a good interview. And they said, well, Coach, if you want a job, you got it. And I said, when would I start getting paid? <laughs> he said, end of July. I said, sign me up. Because <laughs> Kinder's going to pay me in the end of September. Oh, so <laughs> and I said, no, sign me up. So I ended up coming as assistant coach uh, back in 1968 to Don Alonzo, great coach. And uh, I got the head job. Coach Alonzo moved on, and they, they put me the head job. And I was a rookie. Oh, what year was, was that? What, what year did you get that? That's the year that you I, became the head coach. I was the head coach. My quarterback, Johnny Lee Hoffpire. Who, oh, my goodness. Who was my old coach later yeah. on. And uh, so that's basically how I got started in high school coaching. That's just something I always wanted to do. I was raised in a dressing room. You yeah. Know, everybody else was playing on Saturday. I was helping my dad clean up the dressing room after Friday night games. So, so that's all you've ever known. That's all I've ever known. Uh, you know, uh, what do you think you would have done if it wasn't for coaching? Oh, I've probably been an astronomical engineer. No. <laughs> 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 uh, might, might have worked in maintenance or something. But, yeah. Uh, that's all you've ever known then is coaching. That's all right? I've ever yeah. known. Ever known. No, oh, man. Um, that's funny. You were telling me something before we – got on air that you were telling me about your scholarship to NLU? Well, I started out, I redshirted my first year. I didn't weigh but 145 pounds. Today, if somebody signed me at 145 <laughs> pounds, I'd be the water boy on the sideline. <laughs> but uh, I redshirted my first year. I played and lettered my second year, lettered my uh, third year, and then I got injured. I had a brain concussion, and uh, they ruled that I couldn't play football anymore, so... Coach White, I guess he felt sorry for me. He, he put me on his staff, uh -huh. and uh, that was a great experience because he had some good football team. Before I got to Northeast, we didn't win nothing. We couldn't have beat no way. But Coach White instilled a pride in us, and we had some good ball clubs with mm -hmm. him. Uh, Joe Prophet, who was a first-round draft choice at Atlanta Falcons. Okay. And... Uh, Joe and I were roommates on the road. We went on trips. And uh, Coach White said, I want you to keep Joe in line and get him to the meetings on time. That was my job. <laughs> you know, so that was, a, that was a great experience. And then I got to come down to day. But it was, uh, like I say, I'd earned the first string quarterback position at Northeast back in 63, uh, 62, somewhere around there. But uh, they discovered I couldn't play, and, uh, so, so I was relegated to a backup position. You know? uh, well, well, look, let's do this, Coach. That was a fun segment. Let's uh, take a quick break to introduce some of our partners who make this possible, and then whenever we come back, I want to talk to you about some of those, some of those Vidalia teams. We'll, we'll dive into some of the Vidalia stuff, some of the teams and players. From regular family checkups to sedation dentistry, orthodontics and cosmetic dentistry, experience dental care the way it was meant to be, right around the corner from a name you can trust, Miss Lou Family Dentistry. Come see us for all your handmade and fine jewelry needs here at 415 Main Street in Natchez, Mississippi. You can also find us on the web at riseandshinestudio.com. Always remember to smile big, shine bright, and enjoy the journey.
All right, we are back with Coach D. Faircloth. And, uh, Coach, I wanted to ask you about some of your teams and your players in this segment. Let's start out with um, – Let's start out with your proudest team that you ever that you ever coached. Yeah, I have several teams that, that stand out. First one probably the two thousand and three team, which was unbeaten until we got to the semifinals, fixing Golden Dome, and uh, we were the number one team in the state all year long. West St. John was number two. So we ended up playing West St. John in the semifinals. Of course, they had seven Division One. <laughs> I I remember this. Signees playing on that team, probably the most talented team ever played. So our days were numbered. That's but right. that, team, uh, that team was an outstanding team. Tony Hawkins was our quarterback, one of the best kids I ever coached. I remember we played Gina one night. We traded him by four touchdowns going into the fourth quarter. And Tony ignited us, and we came back and won that ball game. Wow. You know, one of the greatest comebacks. That same ever. year? Same yeah. year, 2004. And he was my quarterback in 2003. He threw for over 50 touchdowns and had one interception in two years. Wow. And that came off a deflected ball off a shoulder pad. So uh, it was great. Now, I had another good team back in 1973 that set a record for scoreless quarters, 37 straight scoreless quarters which was later beaten by St. Thomas Moore years later. So that was a state well, record. It was a state record at that time, 37 straight quarters without giving up a point. Wow. And uh, it was a tremendous team. We, we lost St. Louis in the uh, quarterfinals. Who were some of the guys on that team? Oh, I, I had some outstanding. Robbie Savant, Dr. Savant, uh -huh. uh, George Cupid, Bubba Crawford, uh, Lee Bailey. Hardest hitting kid I ever coached. Uh, I had Gary Waller. I had tremendous kids, and uh, I remember we played uh, Milton for state for the uh, district championship. And right off the bat, we got them for a safety. We was up two to nothing, and my kids came running off the field, going, "This game's over! This game's <laughs> over!" Because they knew they weren't going to score. But it was it was an outstanding team. Uh, 1985 team with Eddie Ray Jackson. Uh, we started a year off as number one team in the state and worked our way down. Uh, <laughs> from that point, we just had some bad luck. But we ended up playing Homer in the uh, quarterfinals, and that team was an outstanding ball club. Of course, Eddie Ray, Eddie Ray was uh, an all-stater uh, player of the year in, the, in our class. And uh, we played down at West Lake with Eddie Ray, and he, he rushed for 300 yards, but he also caught 300 yards worth of passes. Oh my goodness. He put on a show and scored six touchdowns, made the USA Today nationwide, you know. So the next week we played De Quincey, where my dad coached at one time. <clears throat> and uh, when we arrived in town, we looked drove past the stores, and all the stores had kill Eddie Ray in the windows, you know, signs. Oh, my goodness. Stop Eddie Ray. Kill Eddie Ray. And so when we came out on the field and and uh, started the ball game, the De Quincey fans hollered, kill Eddie Ray, kill Eddie Ray. Well, he put on another clinic. <laughs> and the second half, they was hollering, give the ball to Eddie Ray. <laughs> Let Eddie Ray carry it. And I said, geez. They so, became fans. Oh, he, he, he was something. He went on, played at Southern Mississippi, you know. Yeah. I remember hearing a lot about his name oh, whenever he, I came he up. He was tough. Day. Yeah. I remember one ball game we played McCall, who, who had their best football team they ever had in their history. And uh, they, they were awesome. And Eddie Ray carried the ball 47 times and never fumbled. Rushed for 300 yards 47 times. It's going something. going back to that first team that you were talking about, the uh, West St. John. Yeah. Uh, they had several guys that played for LSU, too, including, yeah. if, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Tyson Jackson, who was yeah. ended up being either the number three or four pick in the NFL yeah. draft. That and they had, their fullback went there, too. Yeah. Uh, but they, they had seven Division One prospects. <clears throat> and y'all gave them a, a pretty decent game. Yeah, for a while. Yeah. And then they just wore us down. Well, that's you know. – <laughs> and freezing has one of the coldest nights I've ever seen. What about, do you have any teams that just weren't very good and overachieved? 
most of my teams were overachievers. That's what I was <laughs> always proud of. Them. Uh -huh. We took little old scrappy kids and uh, made ball clubs out of them, and they basically were overachievers. They yeah. played above their head, and uh, that's what I'm most proudest of my fairy, of my Vidalia kids. And one of the things I always stuck out, they is the hardest hitting kids. Nobody wanted to play us. Yeah. Because they're going to be sore till Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, so we had to play the top-notch teams in the state because nobody, nobody would play but they didn't want to play and get physical. They may, they may beat us, but they're going to feel it yeah. for a, a good while. But Our guys had pride in what they were they doing. They had a lot of pride. That's we right. put those horns on those helmets and... Everybody we played, there's the Viking boys, you know. You know, I hear all the stories from all the guys. I mean, from from your early days all the way through your your uh, your last days of coaching, and they all talk about, man, coach, you have you ready to run through a wall out there, you know? And well, I, I had great kids. I mean, great kids. I'm so proud of all of them, you know. And uh, I always told them, you put those horns on your helmet. You above all those schools in this whole area because you're a Viking, you know. And that, and that, that got them going. That's right. Who are some of the best players that you ever coached? Oh, I had some good ones. Bill Mosley, when I first started coaching, Bill Mosley was a, a linebacker for me. Tough as a boot. When we ran our 30-30s, which was sprint 30 yards and jog back 30 yards, that was one. We did 30 of those. And every time Bill Mosley get through with a sprint, he was purple because he <laughs> put everything he had into it, into into that that sprint because he wanted to be the best. And uh, he ended up being the, the captain down at McNeese when they went to the Independence Bowl. But he was uh, he was one of these kids that was probably one of the toughest kids I ever coached. I remember. Coming in his junior year, he, I came from the district meeting, and and uh, he came up. His coach did I make all district? And we had ten teams in the district, so it's kind of hard. Yeah. I said, Bill, you, you didn't make it. You almost did, but you didn't make it. Now, look, you see the tears coming out of his eyes. He says, I'm going to show them next year. Well, the next year he was the player of the year in our class, defensive player of the year. He was he was tough as a boot. Tough so, as a so he's probably one of the toughest players. He was one of the toughest players uh, that I ever coached. Uh, who are some other guys who stood out over the years to you? Lee Bailey uh, was probably the hardest hitting youngster I ever coached. I mean, he knocked you out of your sock. <laughs> and uh, he, he prided himself. He had the longest arms. He could sit in a chair and drop something and pick it up, you know. <laughs> and when he dressed out on Friday night, he put pads all up down his his arms <laughs> and he looked like Robocop <laughs> and these kids they were scared to death of Lee Bailey. I what year was this? What this years? was uh, 75 somewhere okay. around in there but we played Lake Providence Lee Bailey put on a clinic and one play he left like four or five guys laid out on the field that's how tough he was and so after the ball game we fixed to get on the bus and I looked up and there's about 20 strange looking kids <laughs> going on our, our school bus <laughs> And I walked over, I said, is there, is there a problem? They said, Coach, we just want to shake hands with a the man. They want <laughs> to shake good? hands with Lee Bailey. Wow, said, that's how you know you made an impact. He, he was tough, went to Tech. You know, he played at Tech till he tore up his shoulder, but he, he was a good one. And uh, of course, I had Keith Woodside that went to uh, Texas A&M. Yeah. He's an Aggie. Yep. Everybody said, did you coax him going to A&M? Has it nothing to do with it. I remember, I remember seeing him the day we got out for Christmas, and I said, I said, Keith, if you had to sign today, where would you go? He said, Texas A&M. I said, why? They ain't even been over here to see you yet. <laughs> he said, I just want to go to Texas A&M. And he was set the record in the Southwest Conference, which is no longer there, for catches out of the backfield, 72 catches out of the backfield. And uh, he went on to Green Bay and started yep. up there. Yep. And... Uh, I was really proud of him. Of course, I had Eddie Ray. I done told you about Eddie Ray, but I had great kids, you know, all the way down the line. Who who would you say was did Did you have any kid that you just felt like 
was going to win the game for you? You felt like this kid is never out of the game? Yeah, I, I had a bunch of them. Tony Hawkins was a prime example of that. Uh, Josh Hoppire and Jared Hoppire were in that same mold. It's, you always knew that they could come through. Uh, but I had a lot of kids that I just trusted them with my life, you know, and that's, that's the way it was. If you, okay, so this is going to be a tough question. One kid that you coached, if you, the, the MVP of all the years, can you answer that question? Or? It would have to be Bill Mosley. Bill Mosley. Because he, every play, he uh, put it on the line. He sort of embodied what Yeah, what when Vidalia I called for was. him to go through a stunt, and we stunted a lot. He would go through the line, knock the guard down, knock the back <laughs> down, and then tackle the uh, ball carrier. That, that's the way he was. He won a game for me one year against Dale High with his mouth. <laughs> Dale High's punting to us. It's a close ball game. And uh, they went back to punt, and I called him. I said, do not rough the punter. <laughs> Let him kick it to us, and we'll run the clock out we can. Oh, yeah, naturally he goes in there and just kills that guy. I think he, <laughs> one of his legs was laying over here. And I, and I was going, geez, they threw the flag, you know. And, and uh, <laughs> the referee called the Dale High captain. He says, all right, do you want the penalty or do you want the play? If he took the play, is our ball downfield? He didn't take the penalty. Well, Bill is walking back after he done knocked him out. <laughs> He walked by the captain and he said, Coach said, take the play. <laughs> and the kid said, we'll take the play. <laughs> and then he went, wait, in those days, if you made that decision, it was over. It's over. Yeah. I mean, one, you got one shot, you can't say, no, I want the penalty. It was all over. I remember Coach Calvert on the other sideline. <laughs> he jumped as high as the telephone pole. <laughs> He's going, what the hell? So, that's the way. That's the way Bill uh, was. That's, that's the kind of kid he was. <laughs> so he got he got the hit and didn't have to pay yeah, the price. Yeah, he caused the so, penalty, but they he, he talked him out of taking. Well, you couldn't penalty. be too mad at him after that. No, I was, I was, <laughs> I was happy with. Him. Uh, well, let's uh, let's take another qu uh, quick break and recognize some of our partners who make this possible. And whenever we come back, let's talk about some of the guys on the other teams. Hey guys, Ronnie Calhoun here. We just wanted to take a moment to recognize our awesome partners who make this show possible. Trinity Medical Center, Miss Lou Family Dentistry, Sabrina Dore Agency, Hampton Inn and Suites Natchez, Hicks Chicks, Go Mart and On The Go Deli, Rolling In The Dough, Rise and Shine Studio, Concordia Bank and Trust, member FDIC, and Ellard Physical Therapy. <laughs> 